Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The development of a generated occlusion requires that the occlusion wax rim be supported on a stable base. The remnants of the temporary bases used to record the ridge impression are removed from the framework. This can easily be accomplished by heating the temporary base from the tissue contacting side and quickly removing the base resin with a pair of forceps. The framework is then returned to the curing cast to be checked for proper seating before the new temporary bases are fabricated. All areas of undercut in the curing cast must be blocked out so that the new base resin will not be entrapped and fracture the curing cast on removal. When all ridge and border undercuts have been properly blocked, tin foil is applied to the cast surface and new temporary bases are formed. The foil must be thoroughly adapted to the cast so that the finished temporary base will exhibit a smooth, polished, intimate contact with the ridge surface. Seating the framework to the curing cast must be perfect to retain the framework base tooth relationship that was recorded during the impression procedure. Tray acrylic can be easily adapted to the cast. The tissue contacting surface of the new temporary base should be free of any defects and should have a highly polished texture. The bases are trimmed and polished, then returned to the curing cast for a final check of fit and stability. The framework with the new temporary bases is then tried into the mouth and is checked to be sure that no occlusal interferences have been developed by the framework or the temporary bases. A hard inlay casting wax is now applied to the temporary base. A suitable wax for generating an occlusal path record is PEX Purple Inlay Wax. Segments of the inlay wax stick are adapted and sealed to the underlying temporary base. 
A soft wax should not be used in an attempt to attach the inlay wax rim to the resin base because at mouth temperature, soft wax will have a tendency to flow and reduce the accuracy of the occlusal record. Once the wax has been properly placed and allowed to chill, the occluding surface of the wax rim is softened with a warm instrument. The appliance with the occlusion rims is positioned in the mouth, seated firmly, and a controlled closure in centric relation is achieved. The patient is instructed to close firmly into centric occlusion. The patient should be able to bring the remaining teeth completely together without any interference or obstruction from the wax or the temporary bases. Repeated heating of the wax surface may be necessary to allow this closure. Anatomic recording of the opposing occlusal anatomy should be achieved before any eccentric excursions are attempted. Excess wax extruded by the closing action is removed. All areas of the occlusal rim must be supported to eliminate distortion or the possibility of fracturing during the wear period. Areas on the occlusion rim that have not demonstrated contact with the opposing occlusion are rebuilt by applying more wax. Each succeeding application must be warmed and softened before being taken to the mouth. Complete closure is demonstrated after each application. Lateral excursions may be developed only when all of the opposing occlusal surface has been recorded in the wax rim. long overriding peripheral turn will force the patient into a constant centric closure and make lateral excursive movement difficult. The recording wax is trimmed so that a very slight vertical turn at the lateral extremities of the pattern is retained. Slight additions of wax are made to support the reduced peripheries before returning the record to the mouth.
Complete closure with full contact is again accomplished before any eccentric jaw movements are made. When the patient can exhibit freedom of movement in all excursions, a final addition of recording wax is made to eliminate any minor defects that may exist in the occlusal impression. The patient then repeats the centric and eccentric closures and jaw movements. After the wax pattern has been satisfactorily formed, a small increment of wax is added down the midline of the developed pattern to achieve a slight opening in the wax rim. This slight addition is chilled, and when the appliance is returned to the mouth, the addition will create a slight posterior prematurity in the occlusion. When the teeth have been unopposed for many years, the root relationship to the alveolus will not be in functional adaptation. This premature contact will reseat the opposing teeth slightly in their alveolus. The additional wax will be molded, extruded, and blended with the occlusal path record. Following a period of functional activity, slight tapping pressures are exerted. Grinding and rubbing pressures are applied to thoroughly develop the pattern. This occlusal rim will be worn by the patient for a 24-hour period. The occlusal path record will be further refined during this time, and both the involuntary and voluntary contacts recorded. The patient is instructed to remove the appliance whenever she eats or when any extremely hot liquids are consumed. The wax occlusion rim is removed from the mouth and inspected to be sure that the wax rim is firmly attached to the underlying base resin and that the pattern is intact in all respects. A replacement tooth shade is recorded and the patient is dismissed.
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.